Okay. Hey, I dropped my glove, Noah. I dropped my glove. Dropped. Dropped my glove. Those are going to be four, Noah. Yeah, I got four. And you're, are you just scattering them or are you going to tie them? I'm just scattering them. Okay. Yeah, we got to figure out how to lay this out. I think we're going to have to run a string and space them in such a way. Yeah. I think we may want to... Uh, Do you want to send him after he's kind of scattered with whatever and grab extra pieces up there and then be cutting stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, once we get this. This was an interesting one. Some of the footing had four bars. Most of it had three bars. But we had to line it up correctly. So what I'm doing is shooting layout. That way we can tie all of the outside okay. bar, essentially right underneath the edge of the stem wall, and then we'll space the rest accordingly. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, nobody's paying attention to me. <laughs> so basically I turned the laser on and already hit the detector. That is hilarious, dude. All I was doing was taking it to the line. Well, basically I was just shifting it around, letting it self level and I was already there. Okay. What I'm doing here is using the Stabila layout station to shoot square. The detector is on the very far end. I have to have my stem wall seven inches off of the concrete. So I set the detector at that far end, seven inches off the back wall, because it's 64 feet, it's our long wall. Then I set the laser on two boards where I've marked a seven by seven, and I turn it on, let it self-level. The dot is right on my mark. I manually adjust way, until I hit the detector, which is really fast, and then I use the fine tuning adjustment there. Now you can use the controller, because it talks to the unit by radio frequency, and it will actually find square by itself. That's it, well, that was easy. Dude, that was so easy. Okay, so here's what we're doing. We're seven inches in both ways. So I just lay a couple of two by sixes on top of the footings. Yeah, now we're hearing that noise. Laser dot is, you know, a 30 second off my line. Good enough. What that does is I've aligned with seven inches in. So parallel to the form board, seven inches in. I'm gonna take the detector over there and mark it. Now we can just pull everything from front to back and from Side to side, <laughs> it's easy, okay. And that's it. Okay, so let's go through this process. You can see the back wall is 64 feet. We just shot a perfectly straight line and I tack nails on the forms on each side. Then coming forward on that right hand wall is I think 40 feet, same thing. Now we're perfectly square. Now it's time to roll out the 100 foot or 200 foot tape, whatever you use, but an open reel tape. I'm using a Stabila tape because it's steel, meaning that it doesn't stretch. So Kyle's on the one side. We call it the dumb end, but in reality it is not the dumb end because if you mess that side up, everything gets messed up. This is the same process if you're snapping lines on top of a slab or your floor. What we have to do though is we have to run a dry line or a string line from nail to nail across the back and then across the side. And that way Kyle, he's gonna cut a foot, so he's gonna hold the one foot on all of those and then I'm just gonna mark on the footing boards what our number is. So the house is 64 feet, I'm gonna mark 65 feet. I'm also double checking the plans to make sure because I didn't do all the math as we move our way across. So what we're doing is all the east-west parallel to the right walls, I think that makes sense. We tack nails, because that's actually our wall layout. After we pour concrete, we're gonna set clips. All we have to do from those nails then is either snap a line or run a dry line if the concrete's still pretty green. We usually try to do this right after we pour, but sometimes it's the next day. We're gonna work all those east-west walls off of our right-hand wall reference point. So that's all I'm doing. So Kyle has the easy job. He's just making sure one foot's on the string all the way down. Now we're gonna go from the back to the front, get all of those parallel. Because our biggest walls are square, then everything that goes parallel to those each way will also be square. So that's the basic principle in a nutshell. Now it's just a matter of communicating with each other. Call out, the, like in my case there in the foreground, I'm gonna call out the number out loud. That's gonna help me remember what it is. 
Kyle's going to listen. He's going to correct me if I get something wrong. He's making sure that his tape measure is parallel and not real wonky because that will, you know, that will affect the length. We want it to be right on. It's this stage, now that we've lifted to grade, that any movement in the footings we're correcting for now with the stem walls. This one was right on the money too. Everything was within a quarter. So we're making small adjustments. Then of course, as we go up with the stem walls, we can make more. So here you can see that we've essentially tied the strings to those nails all the way around. That means that those two strings there are, are 90 degrees to each other. What I'm doing is I had already run around and, and tied off the outside bar, essentially underneath that string that was our seven inches off the footing. Uh, yeah. What I'm showing you here is that we order two foot by two foot 90 degree uh, bends. That way we don't have to bend anything in the field. And to be honest, when I do this again in the future, I'm going to order all of my bar pre-cut. It's easy to do, there's not much of a charge for it, and it saves us a lot of time. I'm using the twin tire from Max. This is the, this is like the most amazing tool. We bought a Max rebar tying gun back in 2014. Max's patents have finally run out, so there's a lot of rebar guns on the market. But Max has been working on these for, I think, 30 years, or almost 30 years. The twin tire is by far the best rebar tying gun on the market. It uses much less wire. The wire is not expensive, by the way. This thing never jams on us. It is a very expensive tool. I think it's like $2,900. Obviously, that's beyond the reach of a lot of people. My argument is we have a very difficult time finding people to come work with us. So we have to buy tools and equipment. So that tool is gonna to tie rebar faster than anyone on a job site for longer. And it doesn't take 10 years or five years to get good at. You can literally give somebody who has never been on a job site this gun, and they can now tie rebar every bit as fast as somebody who's done it for a long, long time. I left that in there so you could see how quickly you can change out the, the wire rolls. We just buy them by the box through white cap. Now what I'm doing as I go through this is I'm always looking down that. each run to make sure I'm staying parallel. It's not critical to be like perfect, but the better that the rebar looks, the better your inspections will go. It's always nice when the inspector shows up and says, that is some pretty looking bar, boys. That is a good comment. That's what you want. You want the inspectors to respect your work because when they do, they talk about it with other people and it makes the inspections go easier. They trust you. Trust is a good, good thing. Okay. Oh, before I get too far into this, you'll notice that there is some water there in the bag system. That did not come from up, it did not come from below. It came because we just keep getting okay. rained on. So the fact is, is that the bag system will hold some water, but as we place concrete, it'll push the water out the seams. To help it, I'll put little slices here and there if I need to, but that's reality. So. Not a whole lot of water there, but figure I better address that because there's going to be questions. Okay, that this side of the footing, know. being that it's a parallel to the joist walls, the engineer called for two foot six wide footings with four bars. So I'm just trying to make sure it's spaced and it looks pretty. Obviously, four bars tying into three. I'm only going to have three corners, and that's what I was eyeballing there. You can see very long overlaps there. We only need to be two foot or 30 inch overlaps. Typically, that's what the engineer will call out. We just let the bar run long. What's the point of cutting it? We already have enough scrap, so there's kind of a, a, a glimpse into our thinking. Okay. 
So you can see a lot of thinking goes into all of this, right? You can't just, just get rolling and go. Making the bar look pretty, staking it in square and parallel, shooting square again, you know, ordering this stuff. Anyway, you can see there's a lot that goes into it. What I'm going to show you for the rest of this video right. is a product that we just started. Oh. All right, duders, once you get laid out, okay, I'll try to blitz through this. I really want all of you guys to get practice doing this okay. because I may not be doing it the smartest. Yeah. And then, what, you know, generally, I don't. Well, I don't think I'd be actually find if I work left to right. That seemed to work a little bit better. You're correct-handed? I'm what? Correct-handed? I yeah, I think working left to right, I'm a little faster. Oh. Hey boy, don't you know, I got something going on. <clears throat> This was our first time using Steelmate. I'll put a link in the description. These things are awesome. They're reusable. Lay them out, tack them to your two by four on your spacing, 10 inches for us. Later when we strip it, we'll leave all of those little orange Steelmates on those nice. boards, those two by fours, and that way we don't have to lay out again. So fast installing these verts. I mean, and this was our first, literally our first time. I think we got it down to 190 in an hour with um, three guys, but I did most of it. So we're just gonna keep getting faster. Sick. You know, no one needs bees. Bees should just cease to exist. Like, what do they do? No. Did you know that that show Noah was not named after Jerry? He was named after the show. No. It was just a coincidence. The expression inane banter comes to mind. <laughs> Just the dumbest things we talk about. Sometimes when I go back to this footage, I'm like, man, what do the neighbors think? Honestly, they usually are just happy to see people who are happy to be working. <laughs> so, do the kids still say totes? Um, Noah, I'm one vert short. What? I'm one. Man, I am not repeating myself. I need a vert. I need a vert. Really isn't a result of your lack of hearing. Lack of his. It's a. It's like it's like a. Um, oh, what do they call it? Really? Throw it. You, almost, you could have skewered me. You could have skewered me, bro. I need a saw. I need a saw. I need a saw. I think he's buying himself. If you would pause, you actually understood him, but it's just a... I did understand it. I was going to practice something like that. Exactly. 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 I've, I've done it too. So tied. So beautifully. Okay. So beautifully. You guys are doing the rest of this. Oh. You're doing so good. I'm doing... No. Proper grandma is... I'm doing so well. Proper grandma. Hey, get out of there, bag. Honestly, dude, for the amount of verts that we're doing, and for as like new at this as I am, yeah. I really can't complain. Right. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. And I just think that as we pour, I'm, I am tired though. I'm tired and I think my lips are sunburned. Tired? <sighs> lips are sunburned? Noah's got, Noah got dirt on his face? Who's Noah? So, I was thinking of more. <sighs> we're going, yeah, we're going vertical ish. I just love the fact that I got three cameras going. <laughs> you know, because 
yep. Reels and TikToks vertical. YouTube is horizontal. Horizontal, as the, some people say. Right. Okay, cool. Tie the hooks into the steel. I know some guys that, that didn't, and then what happens is as you place concrete, it'll cause those verts to lean. So anyway, we, we figured that one out real quick, and we're like, go the other way. We'll quickly tie these because we could. We have a rebar tying gun. So yeah, we're, I'm tying them there once. I would actually recommend tying them to two of the sticks of bar in the footing, and then the verts stay nice and straight as you place concrete. And there is what the footing looks like. Ready for inspection. We passed. We passed. You know what the inspector said? He never sees bar tied that perfect. <laughs> it's the steel mates, I'm telling you. So check the link in the description. Uh, we bought these from those guys. We'll have them forever. 10 inch on center is what our J hooks are. Most of them had 12 inch tails. That's the hook underneath the horizontal in the footing. Um, this That run you just saw, I think they were 18 inch. The back wall being that it's two foot, engineer just had us put them on four foot centers. Man, do they fly <laughs> installing at four foot centers. Most of it was 12 inch centers, but all of the front wall was 10 inch. I think, or maybe I'm, maybe I'm reversing that. I don't know. It was a lot to do. Not a huge footprint, you know, 64 by 40, a ton of steel. Um, maybe literally could probably get the weights on that. A lot of steel, but it's done. So in the next video, we're going to get into the footing pour and I'm going to show this footing pour and the one next door. There's going to be bits and pieces of both that I think are, are worth seeing. For example, we poured this one in the pouring rain, <laughs> and it went great. We poured the other one in a mixture of rain and sun. Not so great. But you will see all of that. So thank you, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate it. These are kind of fun to go through. Please hit that like and subscribe button. I appreciate it, and we will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.